politics is a very interesting game. <laughs> and politics is also a very dirty game. And one man, Johnson Sakaja, is going to regret the day he decided to contest for the Nairobi gubernatorial seat. Johnson Sakaja ought to have asked himself several questions. One of them was the interest of the deep state in Nairobi. The second question he ought to have asked himself was why Mike Sonko decided to move far away from Nairobi to go and try his luck in Mombasa. The truth of the matter is that if Sonko were to make a comeback in Nairobi, Sonko would win the seat very early in the morning. But Mike Sonko decided to go to Mombasa. And Sakaja as a, Kenyans, as a Kenyan has all the rights to contest for any political seat in the country. But for one to qualify to contest as a governor, there are certain basic requirements. One of the requirements is that you must have a university degree. Which is the basis of this analysis. The truth of the matter is that Donson Sakaja <laughs> is a wise man, very brilliant. But the deep state believes very strongly that, that uh, Joseph Sakaja does not have a university degree. And for those who follow the politics of Nairobi very closely, there was this gentleman, Richard Ngatia, who declared his interest for the same seat. He campaigned. In fact, Richard Ngatia launched massive campaign in Nairobi never seen before. Richard Ngatia was prevailed upon by the deep state not to contest. And I've been asking myself one simple question. Why is it that President Ruka Nyata allowed Mike Sonko to become the governor of Nairobi in the last election and not Johnson Sakaja? Because Johnson Sakaja had high chances of becoming the governor of Nairobi. The truth of the matter is that the president and the deep state knew so well that Sakaja never completed his degree at the University of Nairobi, because that's the degree which most Kenyans believed he always had. So the, the deep state that time never, never cleared him. Sonko, being a smart guy, managed to go through that process. And I want to make a bet. If Nyonson Sakaja is going to be cleared by IEBC to contest for the governor of Nairobi, then William Ruto is going to be the next president of the Republic of Kenya. It would mean that the deep state does not have any power and any influence in this country, especially over IBC. If IBC will clear Johnson Sakaja, I can tell you, William Ruto is going to be the next president of the Republic of Kenya. But I don't want to get into that for now. For now, I want us to look at the five biggest mistakes which Johnson Sakaja is committing and are likely to hand the uh, Polycap Igathe victory in August. Before we do that, in case you are watching this channel for the first time, please want to take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue to thank you guys for your continued support because without the support, this channel cannot be where it is. Now, yesterday, something interesting took place. Johnson Sakacha took himself to the DCI. <laughs> and uh, before that, the UDA team had started advancing the narrative that the DCI, that there were attempts to arrest Sakaja. So when Sakaja arrived at DCI, Itumbi started tweeting how Sakaja has been arrested. Then when Sakaja left, 
the DCI issued some statement, <laughs> very funny statement, that they never arrested Sakaja. And um, they, they, they said uh, in, in, in part of that statement that once outside, he again continued making calls only for the orderly sergeant to note that he was buying time as the media reported, reporters gathered at the majestic entrance to DCI headquarters, setting up their tool of trade. At this point, he was immediately shown out. So Sakaja went to the DCI to seek sympathy. For me, that, well, that's one of the mistakes they are committing. That's one of the mistakes. So the truth of the matter is that immediately Johnson Sakaja certificate issue came up, and I've always opined that the, the, the deep state can really mess you up. The deep state noted this. So they started questioning whether Sakaja completed his university, his uh, education at the University of Nairobi. When it became apparent that he could not complete, I mean, he did not complete, Sakaja then tried to procure a university degree from another university in Uganda. When that became difficult, he went to teams. Unknown to Sakaja, by that time, the intelligence was now following each and every move he was making. They notified their Ugandan counterpart. So anything Sakaja was doing from that point was being monitored. Any certificate, any no communication it was being given, a copy was being retained by NIS. And I'm told that Janet Museveni, who is the Minister for Education in Uganda, personally sent a team to Team University to follow up on the matter of Sakaja because it's going to dent the image of education in Uganda. And you also know that the the, the, the Commission on, of uh, University Education in the country also revoked Johnson Sakaja certificate. And IBC, according to some communication which I saw yesterday, dismissed <laughs> that communications from the Commission of uh, University Education, which means IBC, wherever they are, their tribunal is keen probably on clearing Johnson Sakaja. And that's why I'm saying that if Johnson Sakaja is going to be cleared, then William Ruto is going to be the next president of the Republic of Kenya. Red Odinga should forget about this contest. But what are some of the mistakes Johnson Sakaja is committing? The first mistake, which is the biggest mistake, is to stage a fight with the president Uhuru Kenyatta. When Johnson Sakaja issued that long statement, which I analyzed, I opined that the diction and the tone of that statement was not the normal Johnson Sakaja's tone and the diction, and that that statement was probably drafted somewhere in Karen. The other day I saw Sakaja trying to come down from that particular stand on Uhuru Kenyatta, that uh, Uhuru Kenyatta really helped him and the rest and the rest. But the fact that he's now taking on President Ru Kenyatta is going to affect him. The truth is, Johnson Sakaja wanted to try and seek for sympathy. But Kenyans are asking where Uhuru Kenyatta is coming in. If Sakaja has a university degree, it's simple, produce it. Yeah. So yesterday, <laughs> yesterday, he was issued with the demands which he must meet. There are several lists of things he is required to submit by Monday. And I don't think he will be able to meet all of them. And I see a trap in those requirements. So that's the first mistake, trying to fight President Ruru Kenyatta on a matter Uhuru Kenyatta does not really feature in. Number two, the second mistake Sakaja is doing is trying to prosecute this matter in public. You see, K 
Kenyans had high hopes on someone like Sakaja. In fact, when the contest of Nairobi narrowed down to Sakaja and Igathe, most Kenyans were happy that at least Nairobi was going to, were going to choose from the best. But there were some people who always referred to Sakaja as just an educated Soko. And now that his certificates are being questioned, there are events claiming that Sakaja is just a, a Sonko who is dressed in a suit. So Sakaja took this matter to the public. He started posting everything online, pop, to seek for the public sympathy. If you go to Sakaja's wall, almost 90% of the comments were negative. When he had hoped that he was going to get sympathy from them. Kenyans were like Atutaki story we just produced. Yesterday, again, Sakaja went public. Of course, when he, he made that post on Facebook the other day, that statement, attaching those documents, Kenyans were like, how can you in one day pursue everything from Uganda, Kenya, those communications as if people were just seated waiting for you? So he didn't really get that. So I want you to listen to Sakaja trying to prosecute this matter in public. Um we qualify to run for the office of governor of Nairobi County. And I'm glad that Professor Chacha, uh, Nyagoti Chacha, I think you, you know him. He has been, uh, um, I think, CEO of HELB back in the 90s. He has been uh, the secretary to the elections um, board of ODM from 2013 to 2017. Is currently leading the Azimio campaigns in Migori, assisted by Prof. Uh, P.S. Marwa. I think he's a public figure that you know. Um, but in his statement, which you all have, he has confirmed um, very clearly that indeed I qualify because he has said that I met the requirements of the law. On the 6th of June, as he has admitted, I went to present my credentials um, to the CUE. I presented to them Part of what he's asking for. I presented my degree certificate. I presented my transcripts. They then contacted, as per convention and as per our laws, they contacted the National Council for Higher Education, the counterpart council in Uganda, who then contacted the issuing university to confirm the validity of those documents. The university responded and said, yes, this has been our student, and he graduated, and they gave the date. The third mistake Sakaja is doing, <laughs> or committed, was his attempt to get clearance last minute. Sakaja was supposed to be cleared earlier, much earlier, the day the deputy president was cleared. But he did not put his papers on or in order. So he delayed. He went last minute. <laughs> Joseph Sakaja went last minute. The last day. So which means on 6th, which was a day to the, to the last day, Sakaja was busy doing everything. And this is why he has been caught. Assuming Sakaja had... Uh, gone earlier the day the deputy president submitted these documents i'm sure ipc would have cleared him and these issues would not have arisen so the fact that he, he didn't appear that day kenyans were like where's sakaja now kenya started following up his degree at the university of nairobi no he didn't complete so he chickened out of that got wind of another university he was looking for so kenyans were now waiting for sakaja what's next for sakaja so if, for example, Sakaja had just said, okay, let me clear earlier, IBC would have rejected. He would have just gone home. And maybe UDA would have <clears throat> alternated another guy. But now that's not the case now. The fourth mistake, and this is the mistake I think Sakaja will regret, is his failure to complete his university on time. Sakaja knew so well that 
Sakaja knew so well that he was going to run for the governor. Sakaja has been a, a nominated MP, he has been a senator. He had all the time to put his papers in order. In fact, if I was Sakaja today, and I advised him what next for him, if I was Sakaja, I would hire a PR firm, take a low profile, forfeit the interest, go underground, study. After the elections, go back to Nairobi and start telling them how you were denied, you didn't want issues, blah, blah. Then underground, just go to college. Complete. Then make a comeback. It's still two years. So the fact that he didn't complete, you know, he had he had gone through three years. He was remaining with, I think, three units or something. Then he decided to go to Uganda. Sakaja has been going public that his education fully in Kenya. Not a day outside. <laughs> and lastly, I think going for this small university was also a mistake. Sakaja had projected himself as a very wise guy, smart gentleman. Therefore, going for this small university for a, a course, a different course is not right. So for me, if I was Sakaja, I would have just studied in another course at the University of Nairobi. Transfer some credits. Yeah, and being a non-guy, lecturers will be just linear to him. <laughs> Thank you guys and may you have a good day. Bye-bye.